This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Dust Cuz Robotics, and today's video is going to focus on my one pound ant weight robot, Mini Mulcher. If you started watching my channel in the last several months, you might not be familiar with this bot, as its last featured appearance was back in February 2021 when it fought at Norwalk Havoc alongside Division. That turned out to be a bad idea since Division has exposed wheels and Mini Mulcher's blade can hit 360 degrees around it. One bad turn and Division lost a wheel to its compatriot. However, Mini Mulcher has literally never fought except that one time on account of the pandemic and a complete lack of nearby events to fight antweight robots. I even designed an open source arena, built one, and sold it to a local builder in hopes of getting more antweight events started in the states, but even with the rollout of vaccines, events haven't really been easy to get off the ground. However, a competition about 300 miles away called Sword will return on November 6th, and I hope to get both Mini Mulcher and Shrapnel Mine ready in time to fight for it. At this point, I'm still waiting on parts for Shrapnel Mine, but Mini Mulcher is about 95% of the way there. Today, I'll go over the major changes I've made since that last appearance. But first, a refresher on the design as a whole. Mini Mulcher is designed for the one pound weight class, which means it has to weigh at most 16 ounces. The name and design were inspired by an old battle bot called the Mulcher, which contained a lawnmower mounted into the frame at a 45 degree angle. My bot has its blade mounted at about a 5 to 10 degree downward slope, which doesn't affect its mobility too much at slower weapon speeds, and it allows the weapon to be powered with a bigger and more powerful motor while still hitting very low at the front. I designed the bot to be very weapon centric, with about half of its weight dedicated just to the weapon system, and the rest is all lightweight 3D printed plastic. This thing is designed to hit very hard, and use its offense as its main defense. That said, mobility was clearly a big problem for the Beta V0.12 version that fought at Norwalk. So for this, what I'm calling version 1.0, I switched the drive system over to common N20 motors that many other lightweight bots use. These motors are pretty wimpy, but they're widely available, cheap, lightweight, and come with an ESC in a really small package in this case. Since I originally planned to use hacked servos for drive, I needed something that could plug into the receiver and run off 7 volts, and these are perfect. The main body of the robot has only two parts, the chassis and the lid. The lid used to be flat, but I had the central shaft support tear out of the bottom from big hits, so now the lid has protrusions to reinforce this integral part. The bot is extremely serviceable, with only a handful of screws. The lid is held on with 6 or 8 plastite screws. Removing the shoulder bolt for the weapon shaft then provides access to all of the internals. Two screws hold the power switch to the inside, four screws hold the motor underneath. Everything can be swapped to a new chassis in about 10 or 15 minutes. So the chassis itself is almost disposable armor. That said, each chassis can take 7 to 12 hours to 3D print in different materials and can weigh up to 80 grams depending on settings. Speaking of 3D printing, if you need some really detailed prototype parts or a large number of small parts and don't own a capable enough hobby printer yourself, check out PCBWay's 3D printing service. Admittedly, this is far more expensive than printing yourself if you have a hobby machine that can do it, but PCBWay is capable of 3D printing in materials that are impossible for any hobby 3D printer, including metals like titanium, tool steel, stainless steel, and aluminum. There are plenty of aerospace engineering parts in jet engines and rockets that need to be 3D printed in metal due to their operating temperatures and the need for internal fluid channels that are impossible to machine. And if your part can be CNC machined instead, PCBWay can do that too and an even wider range of metals and plastics. And that's not to mention their awesome PCB fabrication and assembly services that they're known for. Check them out at the link below. I had been using a script up to this point, but now I'm just winging it. So back in February, right after that competition where Mini Mulcher took off Division's wheel, I realized that it was kind of a stupid idea to have it be completely incapable of moving at more than one mile an hour. So I actually designed a new chassis revision back then that allowed me to fit the N20 motors that I'm now using. 
I printed the chassis in PLA, made sure the things fit in it, and then promptly forgot about it entirely for several months. Then, June and July rolled around. Sword actually came back for August 1st, which was the first time it appeared since the pandemic, and I tried to scramble to get Mini Mulcher and Shrapnel Mine together, but at that point Shrapnel Mine didn't exist, and it was a mad sprint that ultimately ended in failure when August starting to roll around also meant that BattleBots preparation had to ramp up, since BattleBots filming started on August 20th. And I was competing on the Bots and Stuff team to help out with both Bloodsport and Retrograde in the offseason, and once I got there, primarily helped out with Retrograde during the film shoot. So as fast as it goes? Full speed. I can talk much more about that at length once the season starts to air. I've heard early January-ish, but I'm not sure if that's official yet. In any case, um, Mini Mulcher pretty much sat untouched until October, and then I started working on this newer version of it that has a reinforced lid to help deal with the shaft side loads and also trying to tweak a bunch of other things to make it so that it'll work a lot better against actual one pound robots instead of just as a mini bot to a three pound robot since that went terribly the first time. There were pretty much two things that I wanted to majorly change about Mini Mulcher after having gotten the N20 drive to work and it having an actually decent movement speed. Number one was I wanted the self-writing to be a lot more reliable and number two was I wanted to be able to adapt it to different types of opponents. In order to make the self-writing work a lot better, I decided to change from attempting to use set screws threaded into plastic, because that doesn't work at all, to instead trying to make sort of a clamp collar style system. At first, I tried using a lock nut with a number 632 screw. That turned out terribly because the lock nut required way too much torque to uh, screw into, so it just kind of spun and deformed the plastic hex imprint. Uh, so then I switched to using a square nut that doesn't have a nylock insert, and that seems to work very well because I can torque it down as much as I want and it doesn't require a ton more turning force on the nut to tighten the screw more. It just kind of pulls the head of the screw and the nut together with more and more force. And that way I can tighten it really, really, really tight onto the shaft to the point where it doesn't really slip very much anymore. The axe head weapon I designed works pretty well, um, but it's also rather heavy and doesn't leave me with a lot of room to add different front attachments. And I added this modular dovetail system with an extra plastite screw to the front so that you could put on all sorts of different front attachments, but I hadn't really 3D printed other usable ones up until now. I quickly designed a wedgy thing that I could potentially use against horizontals and a much shorter and stouter kind of scoop front that I think might be a decent all-around kind of attachment since it doesn't have the issue that the hinged forks I had been using have, which is that they can get stuck in the upward or downward position and cause lots of problems for me. With this bill front, it's really, really, really easy to self-write from almost any position. And I also made sure that because it's TPU, it should be able to take pretty huge hits without actually deforming or tearing apart or anything. This only left me with one other thing I wanted to address, which was weapon reach. I had originally designed a mini mulcher to use a really long, thin 9 inch long bar, but if you watch my playlist of mini mulcher videos, you'll notice that this caused a huge problem due to the way that physics works where if you have something that has an extremely large moment of inertia in one axis and an extremely small moment of inertia about another axis, 
and a middling moment of inertia about a third axis, and you're spinning it about that third axis, uh, it basically just wants to flip upside down magically. Uh, so the robot essentially would just like launch itself into midair and flip upside down randomly if I spun up that long bar at all to like a reasonable speed. This was exacerbated by the fact that the weapon is like five of my 16 ounce weight uh, budget. So I was looking online for some inspiration for different weapon designs that I could make another nine inch reach version of since the axe head is only a seven inch reach and doesn't quite give me the low hit that I would like at the front. And I found this cool looking futuristic shuriken design. So naturally I pretty much copied the entire outline of it and then played around with it quite a bit to turn it into a usable weapon that is only a little bit lighter than the axe head weapon but instead of being cut out of 3 16 inch ar-500 it's cut out of three millimeter thick ar-500 so it's a lot thinner but it has the nine inch effective reach that i want and because it is symmetric as a three blade weapon it is perfectly stable no matter what no more flipping upside down or anything like that. The axe head weapon is pretty good, but it has an MOI ratio from X to Y of about 3 to 1, whereas this tri-bladed weapon is essentially 1 to 1. Sorry if the end of this video seems a bit rushed, but I ran into a bunch of issues when editing this that made it so that I was having some problems getting footage together and seeing what it would actually look like in the final version of the video, and that made it difficult to get the last few minutes of this runtime together. Hopefully it wasn't too bad for you guys, and I think that I've got most of those issues worked out for the next few videos. If you liked this video, click like. If you want to see how this robot performs at Sword this weekend, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon since I'll be making an event recap video in a few weeks, and I'll be fighting Shrapnel Mine and possibly another entry there as well. So you should be excited for what's coming next. Thanks for watching.